down to again, I believe God works that way. I know God can save anybody, but God, I believe God works through the bloodline myself. You don't have to agree with me. Amen. I believe that's a, but I have seen God just reach down and get ranked sinners and didn't know nothing about nothing. He can do that. How many knows he can? Praise the Lord. Brother's working on this for me. He's going to take some of the reverb off for me. I'm, I'm slow. I got reverb too much. I listen for myself. I don't know where it is. Praise God, but I appreciate you, Brother Bill. Amen. I told the folks at church not long ago, I said, you know what? A lot of people don't realize when, when just like, for instance, these, these murderers back through the years, Hitler. When Hitler died, that spirit that lived in him didn't die. That spirit floated off looking for somebody else to get out. You know, they think they served the problem, I don't know, you know, how do you believe in justice or how do you believe in hanging or whatever you believe that's between you and God, but that really don't get rid of the problem because that spirit just floats off looks for somebody else to get in. Amen. So we need the protection of the Holy Ghost. But down through the years, Satan has learned so many tricks. He's conniving. He's not going to come with a pitchfork. He's not going to come with a fork and tail. He'll come in with a Bible under his arm. Have you noticed know, Very bold. He'll come right up on the front row and not throwing this to none of y'all. I don't believe none of y'all's a devil. Don't let, the, don't let the devil get in this. But he'll do that because he's, he's very bold. And so while these other generations has passed on, he's kept on these old tricks and learning more and learning more and learning more. For instance, counterfeit. I know it probably don't work like this now, but I heard a few years ago that when they would hire somebody to, to examine counterfeit money, they take, they, there's like a hundred things. Now they probably got computers that does it now, but there's like a hundred different things that, uh, uh, that they can find out if, if money is counterfeit. It might be the thickness of the paper. It might be the ink. It might be the typing. I don't know what all it was. But maybe a hundred things. You say, how did you learn that? They didn't teach them the wrong. They taught them the real dollar so perfectly Come on. that when they saw the counterfeit, they recognized it. Come on. Come on. I ain't got time to preach all the false doctrines. Yeah. I ain't got time to preach all the fairs and all the different ways the preachers is going. I just need to preach Jesus. Amen. So true. Come on. So biblical. That if somebody sees something false, they'll recognize it. And they love God to them. Praise the Lord. And so from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, let me read a verse. Praise God in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 3 and verse 11. To John the Baptist said, I need baptize you with the water and to repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Those shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now this is a promise. Praise God from the Word of God. He said He's coming. They thought it was, they thought it was Him, but it wasn't Him. Praise God. It wasn't uh, it wasn't Him. It was uh, it, it was He was a forerunner. He came to get the people kind of going that way, to straighten their path out, and try to get them, you know, and teach them about baptism and all these things. And to live right, you know, He said, "Don't come out here uh, because you think you're Abraham's seed to get baptized." He said, "God can raise up stones to Abraham." Praise God. But He said, "Bring fruit." Meet for repentance. Change your life, in other words. Let there be a change in your life. Let me see something. Praise God. You say, well, you're, you're, you're trying to be a judge. The Bible said you can tell the tree by the fruit it bears. I don't know about nothing, nothing very much about archery or I don't know much about farming. But I know one thing. If I see an apple hanging on a tree, it's an apple tree. Come on. And he loves God. You can call it a peach tree if you want to. But I'm an old country boy in Mars Cave. And I got sense of no, it's an apple. So really it's an apple tree. What are you saying, Brother Vincent? I'm saying that somebody that lives in continuous sin is a sinner. Come on. What do you mean with that? Well, I'll tell you what I mean with that. There's two verses in the Bible that kind of sets me back on my heel. And if you don't examine these, you'll, you'll get lost in there. The, we call it Little John. You know, St. John, then John 1, 2, and 3. Over Little John, John had some scriptures in there that said this. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Now, that's a powerful statement, ain't it? Woo! My Lord. The Bible said, all sin comes short of the glory of God. But John said, he that committeth sin is of the devil. Then he turned right around again and he said, if you sin... You have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What oh. kind of guy is this? Is this guy double-minded? Is he double-tongued? Double no. That little ETH. He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's a person who gets up and lives in it. That's a person who gets up expecting to do it. He's not trying to quit doing it. If you, if you sin, that's singular. If you get trapped up, if you get tricked up, and you sin, John, the Bible said you have an advocate with the Father. But he that committeth sin, he that liveth in sin, is of the devil. How many say amen to the Word of God? Amen. So you see, you know, this is, it's not twisted up. It's not double-minded. It all comes right down to the truth. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible spoke about how that uh, Jesus would come and how that he would, uh, 
how that he would, uh, he said the, the, the fan is in his hand and he'll thoroughly purge the floor. It's there in the same scriptures I was reading a while ago if you were following me up. I shouldn't be in a hurry, but I guess I'm trying to. But he said his fan is in his hand and he'll service, thoroughly purge the floor. Now if I understand some of the history that I read on this and studied on this, back in the primitive days, we would call very primitive days, you know for hundreds and thousands of years I put out a little, little newsletter and I was talking about the fact my dad was born 1899, just right around 1900. And if you'll just think about it just a minute, the changes that's come to this world in the last 100 years. I mean, before that, on back as far as we have biblical history, if you wanted to light, it had to be a candle. If you wanted to, if you wanted to go somewhere, you had to walk or ride a donkey or maybe you could catch a ship that's going the right way. But around 1900, here come cars, here come trains, here come electricity, and on and on, and fans, and air conditions, and computers, and everywhere you look, kids got cell phones, and they punch and punches, and all that kind of stuff. And I was a little boy, I was riding a biker stick with a, with a, with a brass string tied around it, that was my horse. Hey, man, come on, somebody. Oh. Praise God, but you walk down the road now, you can't hardly see kids no more. Yeah. Then the house. Punching on something. Hello. I mean, love God. I'm not getting you business. I'm just telling you the facts. It's changed so much. My daughter had a thing that was documented the other day, and I know that I need to lose some weight, but let me tell you something. We're living in a generation today that scientists says this is the first generation that the parents is going to outlive the children. Diabetes and all these things is coming with all this junk. Come on, have me say amen Hello. today. Hallelujah. You know, you might be old when you learn it, but when you learn it, you need to change something with it. One of the things you need to do is say run around the house three times before you pick a button or something. Praise God. Give them a little challenge. How many loves God today? Don't wait to get so old you couldn't run. Come on. Praise God. How many loves God? Amen. I may have to hit four or five things here. I just got one. Maybe got 30 minutes here. Praise God. But whose fan is in his hand? And I thought how Satan will use anything that God uses. How many believes in, in the old-fashioned Holy Ghost? In the gifts. How many believes in the gifts? Yeah. Well, you know the devil's got a tongue too. Oh, yeah. Did you know the devil's got gifts now? Come on. I don't know how it is over here in this area, but a lot of places where that I travel and preach, people don't hardly want to hear a good solid message no more. They want somebody to lay hands on and say, Yeah, the Lord loves you. Come on. Yeah, the Lord loves you, kids. Come on. That's an old trick. I come up in Louisville 40 years ago when I was a boy, big old show buildings with balconies full when $10 was like $100. Amen. And they tried to get somebody to give a $10 bill. They wouldn't give a $10 bill. Finally, somebody give a $10 bill. Lay hands on, Yeah, the Lord does love you. I see your troubles. I'm going to bring you. Yeah, they line up at the back door with ten dollar bills. There's something wrong with that picture, somebody. Oh. Come on, God don't need that ten dollar bill. Oh. Brother oh. Vincent oh. might need it, but God don't need it. And God don't sell his gifts. Somebody say amen today. Amen. Hallelujah. We just need good old fashioned solid preaching. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. God has used me in prophecy, but I'm telling you the truth, he almost has to make me anymore because I've seen so much counterfeit. I've seen so much junk. Can I tell you the truth today? We need to reach back for something that's real and solid, something we can stand on. Some that cause us to live right. Some our kids see in their life that makes them want to change. It makes them want to live right. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You're the light of the world. Jesus said I was the light. Now you're the light. Yeah. Did on. you know that every light in the Bible days, when, when Jesus told them apostles that you're the light of the world, they understood that every light at that time had to have fuel. Come on. There wasn't no electric, there wasn't no AC and DC and flashlights and all that stuff. Every light in that hour and in that day had to have fuel. It either had to have some wood put on it, it had to have some kind of oil put on it. Come on. And them apostles knew what Jesus was talking about. He said, you're the light. They said, if we're going to be light, we're going to have some fuel. Come on. He said, Brother Vincent, what's fuel? I tell you some good fuel. Prayer. Amen. Fast and seeking God. Read the Bible. Praise God. If we don't this hour, this generation, when the Lord comes back, there's going to be a multitude of people that tries to trim their lips. Come on. They don't want to have no hope. Now, you know, I'm not pastor here, and I, I'm not trying to bring a new doctor, but I firmly believe at one time they had some oil. You say, why, Brother Vincent? They said our lamps are gone out. They couldn't have went out unless it was almost burning. Yeah, come on. Come on. See, a lot of people talk about the time and place. Thank God for the time and place. But where are we in this time and place? Yeah. Where we're standing now. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. I remember when I was a kid, talking about that prophecy. I remember when I was a kid, I'd go to church with my brother. I'm the youngest of 12. My second oldest brother, just four of us left. Brother Floyd Vincent was a song leader. And he, had, he sung, and he was a preacher later on in his life, a pastor. But he would sing in these churches with three and 400 people. You know, big crowd to me. Amen. He's a wonderful singer. And I remember going to some of them churches when I was 16, 17 years old. And somebody started speaking in tongues. And you could feel fire run over you. 
If somebody started prophesying and interpreting that thing, you could feel the power of God so strong you couldn't understand it. Come on. Well, God ain't changed. Yeah. He's still God. Yeah. But you see, I'm talking about counterfeit. The devil has brought so much counterfeit. I tell you, I told you, I believe in prophecy. But when we're going to see a man of God stand up and say, you got to quit that sinning if you want God to bless you. Oh. When we're going to have a man of God walk out like Peter and say, you didn't lie to me, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Oh. Come on, somebody. When there's a prophet going to walk forth and say, if you don't straighten up, God will shut up the heavens for three years and six months. Your cows will die. Your gardens will grow. You don't hear that no more. But it's, yea, the Lord loves you. Yea, the Lord's going to bless you. Hour and take a stand for God and take a stand for His Word. If we want to see God move, give the Lord a hand if you love Him so much. Amen. They tell me it was a time that they would take their grain and they'd put it on the, on the floor and they'd put it on like on a, like a screen thing, if you please. And they'd pitch it up there, but they would walk on it or they'd take some kind of primitive heavy weight and roll over it to break the husk off of it. That's what I call it break the husk off the outside of the seed. Then they would pitch it up there on the screen-like thing. When they pitch it up there, they had somebody over here with a fan, some kind of fan. Of course, now they'd have all kinds of stuff. But back then, if they had anything, it was just manual. They had to do it. Amen. And it would blow the husk away, and the seed would come back down. The good seed would come down. The Bible said the fan is in his hand. Hallelujah. Come He's on. thoroughly purging his floor. See, the devil saw that, so the devil come along, and he's going to try to use everything God uses. You remember back in the book of Genesis when he's building the Tower of Babel? Come on. Babel means confusion. They're going to build this tower to heaven. Everybody spoke the same language. Everybody probably the same type of people. We know Germans. We know Americans. And just people came out of Adam and Eve and everybody was talked the same language. They made up their mind they're going to build this tower. But God come down and said, build this tower. And he said, the only way I can stop to build this tower, I've got to confound their language. Come on. I've got to confuse them where they can't talk to each other. How many share me preach today? Yeah, it's good. I mean, you know the church world is in this shape today. Come on. They can't talk to you if you don't believe just like they believe. Amen. Yeah. They won't give you a chance to tell them. And then I'll tell you what my grandfather believed. Well, praise God, we all had grandfathers. I had one of the wonderfulest dads that I could dream about having. Wonderful Christian. Passed away when he was 82, sitting up in a chair. Remember, they fall down in a chair. When they walked in the room, they said they could see the glory of the Lord in that room. I don't doubt that at all, praise God. But if God shows me something in this hour that he didn't reveal to my daddy, Come on. That don't make my daddy wrong. That just means dad come as far as he can go. You say, I don't believe that stuff. How come God told Daniel, said, these things don't tell nobody. Shut them up to the last day. Come on. And he loves the Lord. But when they built the tower of Babel, uh, the Babel, uh, the, the, over, uh, they built the tower, amen, and God confounded their language and they couldn't talk to each other. They say, hand me a hammer. They might say, ching chong chong or something. It really happened. Yeah. They couldn't talk to each other. Come on. And so God spread them all over the world. God didn't leave the black people in the oven too long. Come on. They're all alike. But when He put them down south for a thousand years, that hot weather down there, their skin got dark. Their nostrils spread open so they could breathe better. God didn't make them like that. God just put them in different parts of the world. People up north, black and painted. Come on, somebody. Y'all looking at me funny now. Come on. They come from somewhere because it's all alike. It didn't say he changed the way they looked one bit. He said he just put them in all the different parts of the world. That's right. yeah. He scattered them out. Well, we don't make any different. Like, you know, I, don't, I know we don't like to confess this, but we really all came from the same place. Come on. He was the mother of all people. Adam yeah. was the father. The Bible said the first man Adam was from earth, earth, and the second man Adam was the Lord from heaven. Let me believe that. Amen. Paul's on the road to Damascus, seen a great light, fell to the earth and blinded him. Paul's a Jew, believed in one Lord. Here we are, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on. Paul fell to the ground and said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. Yeah. Woo! That's, re that's a revelation right there, man. Amen. That Jew boy knew there would be one Lord. Come on. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. How I many loves God? Amen. And so when he's scattered them all over the world and confounded their language and couldn't talk to each other. So Satan come along and he saw that. See, he was there. I don't know how he does it, but he walked around and talked to God. Mm. And he remembers the story of Job. Yeah. Sons of men come up to show themselves to God. The Bible said Satan's there also. God said, what are you doing here? He said, going to and fro throughout the earth, seeking who I can devour, deceiving who I can deceive. I haven't read it in a while. But he was right there. God said, if you consider my servant Job, he's perfect in all of his ways. 
Yeah, got a hedge built around him. Take that hedge down. Let me touch him. But God proved that he had a man that hour that would not lose his integrity, that would not sin. His wife said, won't you curse God? Now he lost seven sons, three daughters, lost all of his livestock, lost everything he had. That's why I'm telling you, if that's our God, it's not going to get us off the ground. No. There's nothing wrong with having nice things, but it's, it won't get you off the ground. You're going to have to have something real when this thing comes down. And I know we have different doctrines here. I know some believe in pre tribulation some men, some folks. So what do you believe? I'm not pastoring this hour, but I do have persuasion. Come on. Praise God. I'll tell you this, we're going through a whole lot more than we've been taught. Because we're already going through a whole lot more than we've been taught. You say, we ain't going to go through nothing. Go over in them countries where they're driving nails on the top of their head. Just call, call themselves a Christian. And say, we ain't going to go through nothing. They'll say, you must be from America. Well, let me tell you something. America's not God's address. The Bible said He's the God of the whole earth. Oh, he loves some people over there. Amen? I'm not saying it's a great tribulation, but you know we've not been here longer than you thought we'd have been here, according to them preachers. But I'm not going to fuss with them because it's not a heaven or hell issue to me. If He comes before tribulation, I want to go. If He comes in the middle, I want to go. If He comes to the end, I want enough of God to take me through and go. I'm not going to stand around and argue about it and miss God. Come on, somebody. Get mad and fuss with my brother. Get mad and break in fellowship because that's what the devil wants us to do. So Satan comes along and he steals things that God uses that works. I had a man tell me, I was sitting out in the middle of a lake in, in, in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Big old lake, a lot bigger than the lakes that I've seen around here. I'm not a fisherman. If I go fishing, if I don't catch something an hour, I'm going home. Now my daddy and my brother, he'll go stay all night. That's how people catch his fish. you got to be there when they bite. Come on. <laughs> Amen. I never caught no big fish. I relax a little while and then I go to the house. Praise God. But I sit down in the middle of that lake with Pastor Wilkerson. In about 1984, big old lake, and he was a fishing. I was telling him about a meeting I went with 6,000 people, people being healed and cancers being healed. And by the way, God's still a healer. Yes. 1985, my wife sang in here a while ago. Went to the doctor. She's she had some sore places, some hurt places. They done an uh, they done an ultrasound. Said she had a, a cyst on her ovary. They said we can take it off 30, 45 minutes. Don't worry, ain't nothing to worry about. They come out about two hours later, me and a preacher friend of mine's wife and my oldest daughter standing there and they said she had a tumor. I said, what kind of tumor? We'll tell you later. They come back out and said she had cancer on, on both ovaries. One was three inches, one was an inch and a half. She had cancer around her bowels. Amen. That's a death sentence. I don't know if you know anything about it or not, but that's pretty much a death sentence. And they said, go rush straight to Louisville and get on chemo. She never went to Louisville and got on chemo. She never been back to the doctor for cancer. It's been 26 years. Come on, somebody. I know God's a healer. said, well, brother, you're going to do around. I'm fighting battles. She's fighting them. battles. We're all fighting battles. We're all going to leave here one day. I don't believe we have to leave with a terrible disease. I know some good people died. Don't get me wrong. I ain't judging nobody. But I'm telling you, God can still heal. If you just hold on to him, God can still heal. Give the Lord a hand if you love him, somebody. So God saw the sifting. Or, or, uh, he saw the Satan come along and saw what God was doing, so he started copying after him. Let me show you one more thought. His fan is in his hand, he'll thoroughly, thoroughly purge it forward. His sift is full. He'll get the. How many ever seen Mama use a sifter? Anybody here? Amen. Amen. Mama use a sifter. You ever seen a cream separator? I've seen Mama that pour, pour milk in a cream and crank that thing and cream come out over here, milk come out. See, it's, and, and a sifter, put the flour in it. Mama put the flour in it. Sift that flour. Jesus told Peter, said, said, Peter, Satan desires to sift you. Yeah. Well, did you know he's, he desires to sift us all? But Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you. Come on. That when you're converted, you'll strengthen your brother. Come on. Satan desires to sift you, Peter. Great man of God. One of the greatest men of God went down in the Bible. I mean, God allowed him to have the keys of the kingdom to lay the foundation for the New Testament church. Jesus said, Y'all all be offended to me before this night, so Peter said, Not me. And he wouldn't mind. He meant what he said. Because Jesus, the Bible said, No God, which means trick or deception, was found in his mouth. Jesus would have said, Peter, you're lying. He called plenty of people hypocrites. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't afraid of it. He's like that old country preacher. He just called sin. He just didn't say don't sin. He told people what sin was. Come on. But I went to the altar. I didn't have to get down there. I wonder, I wonder what I need to do. I know what I need to do. Yeah. And I did. 
the help of God. But Peter, he meant it. He said, Lord, I'll die. Yeah. I won't deny you. Jesus looked at him and said, before the cock crows, you'll, you'll deny me three times. Peter denied. Before that night's over, cut a man's ear off. Yeah. So you don't know what you're facing out here when you're out the door today. You don't know what you're going to do. Come on. But here's a man that's going to die for the Lord. Here's a man not going to deny the Lord. No matter what happens, he pulls a sword out and cuts a man's ear off. Yeah. Ready to fight, man. So what have you done, Brother Vincent? I don't know. I'm not judging Peter. I ain't done preaching yet. Oh, Peter went on over there and followed him on over there when he took Jesus and put him in before the high priest and son-in-law, all of them. And Peter followed him along. Some woman come up and said, said, you're one of them. He said, no, I ain't. I ain't one of them. Come on. He never would have dreamed that he would have said that. Yeah. I went to a little church in Louisville, Kentucky when I was a boy. The Lord called me to preach when I was 17 years old. I preached a few times during a scary death. But I remember they, they closed the little church and I was back, believe it or not. We was kind of kids would come to come. We'd go outside and get behind the door. And we really did eat last. We didn't eat first. We eat last. Come on. And I said, no wonder we didn't learn it because we had to go outside. The kids out there didn't know more. <laughs> Praise God. I come off a farm and moved to Louisville when I was seven years old with some boys smarted off to a grown person like to scare me to death. I had never heard a kid smart off to a grown person. I wouldn't have to walk a half a block here and down there. Come on. I was in second grade. A man come to our house, straight cars about going to be brother-in-law and said a cuss word. And I come in the house saying a cuss word. I was in the second grade. Not the first, but the second grade. And I come in the house saying a cuss word. Bad cuss word. Mama didn't whoop me because she knew I didn't know what it meant. I'd never heard it before. I was in second grade. How many second graders now that you, you think they heard cuss words? Come on. Somebody said, I was just like it always was. No, no, no. It's getting worse. Amen. Worse. Amen. God chose us to be in this hour. And I'm going to tell you something. When I'm telling you this, I'm telling me and I'm telling my family. God didn't raise us up to be wimps. Come on. He didn't raise us up to be smart and excellent, mean, and I'm rigorous you, but He didn't raise up to be, us up to be ashamed of His name. Amen. Come on. The shame of His word. Amen. 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 Good preaching. He chose us to be in this hour. Yeah. Woman come in there and said, you're one of them, your speech betrays you. He even cursed, didn't he? Yeah, cussing. Cussing, cutting, preacher. Come on. It broke his heart. When the cock crowed the third time, he looked at Jesus. Jesus looked at him, and Peter went out and wept. Amen. Broke his heart. He was sorry. And when Jesus risen from the dead and he told him to tell the disciples to come, he said, tell Peter to come too. You know why? He knew Peter wouldn't have come. Come on. See, it wouldn't be a fans and much about it. Peter knew he'd fail. Yeah. People anymore don't even seem to know when they fail. Come on. Peter knew he'd fail. He said, tell the disciples to meet me. But said, tell Peter to come too. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank God. Come Hallelujah. On. Praise the name of Jesus. Satan is using things to deceive this nation in this hour worse than I've ever seen before. For instance, the tongues. The devil's got tongues. Yeah. Come on. People live like the devil still speaking tongues. Yeah. They still grab people in the head, shake their head, and say, be healed. Yeah. Well, outside and run off with somebody else's wife. I'm telling you this. Oh, oh, come on. Hallelujah. But there's still a real. Anytime there's a counterfeit, there had to be a real for the devil to counterfeit yeah. off of Come on. That's what I want, don't you? Amen. I want the real tongue. I want the real gift. If I've got that much of God, I want, if I've got that much right there, I want it to be real. Come on. Another guy walking walk around like this and said he's got all this. That's all right. I just want him and God. But if I've got anything, I want it to be real. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God speaks to me and says, Say, thus saith the Lord, I want to know it's God. Because I, to start with, I don't play God. I don't want to play with God. I fear God. Yeah. I prophesied to a woman come to our church. She's still alive in there. Her husband's dead. She'd come to our church when I was just a young preacher. And, and she come in the door, she's just all downcast, she's just all broke down, she, she, her heart was broke, her, her, her boy was getting a divorce from, 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 from his wife, and she was torn all in peace. I know I'm just kind of teaching today, and I'm jumping too high, but I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is the truth. If you'll let it soak in. I prophesied to her, and I said, God's going to fix it. Just a few words. She went out the door, the devil jumped right straight on my back, and said, boy, you've done it now, everybody in this church heard you say that. I'm all. And I'll be honest with you, kind of bothered me. Because when you're up in the spirit, you find a giant. Let me say Oh, yeah. She come back in the door in just a few days. 
with her with her with her shoulders lifted and her smiling from ear to ear. She said they love each other more than ever. You know why? Because it was God. It wasn't already mentioned. It was Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I want. I want something real, don't you? Amen. Amen. I want to hear the old solid word preached. I want to, I want to, I want to have confidence in my preacher. Come, Come on. on. Hallelujah. I want to live a life that I, that I can believe what he says. How many loves God to me? Come on. Amen. And all this pride in God's and I'm just about done. Come back to the music if you would. Just about done. But let me tell you this. There's pride in this hour today. I come up wearing my older brother's clothes many times. Secondhand clothes. And I'm not ashamed to do it now. It's just hard to find big clothes in a secondhand store. I'm not ashamed. John Timpton gave me this shirt. A preacher friend of mine lost 100 pounds. I said, thank you, brother. Yeah. Praise God. But, the, but the, I read a story just the other day but this man said he went to the Gaither. I mean, that was a Gaither band. Yeah. He went to the Gaither band's concert and he said they asked him to get up and he said he was so proud. He got up here and he was so happy he forgot he couldn't say nothing. God has given us, I tell about our church, God has given us so many wonderful things. There's people in this world by the thousands and millions that will never own a bed. Never have had a bed, don't expect to have one. Sleeping on. on the ground. They don't have a house, never expect to have a house. Sleeping on the ground. They can't walk down their street with a Bible because somebody will kill them and throw them in prison. We're so blessed. And God's moved us. And when I was a boy, we'd have got food stamps, but they didn't have food stamps. Mama worked at the restaurant, made $28 a week. She brought a can of beans home, peas home one day, a big old gallon of can of peas. I ate so many peas, I got sick. Mom, poor people. Yeah. And God come along and started blessing us and giving us a nice house to live in. And God started, I, I live in, I bought a double wide new, it's the only new thing I ever had. But if I went by my house when I was a boy, I'd have said rich people live there. You know why we got running water? We got a bathroom in a house. Come on. I mean, he loves God. But see, these things we take for granted. If we don't watch ourselves, pride's going to slap us down. Yeah. Amen. Better start thanking God for what God's done for us. Listen to this little story. We'll have him sing a song, and maybe we'll pray. Come on. The young man went to a big concert one day, a big service. They asked him to come up and testify. He went up the steps, his shoulders back, his head up there. Man, he was proud. He got up there and he stumbled along, stumbled along, couldn't hardly say nothing. He went back down the steps with his head down and his shoulders down. Little sister stopped him and he got about three seats back and said, Sonny? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, if you don't want up like you come down, you could have come down like you want up. I mean, he loves God. Come on. Yeah. We want to be exalted and God exalt us. Come on. Let God lift us up. I mean, he loves God today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because when you take all this off, take all the fine suit and clothes and everything off a millionaire, he's laying there just as naked as anybody else. Come on. When he goes out of here, he won't be able to take Job said, Naked I came to this world, naked I shall return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Come Blessed on. be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your hands with me, would you? Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to touch every heart in here. God, if nothing else, awaken our minds and our hearts to the, the counterfeit that the devil has. Don't let us accept anything counterfeit. Not a counterfeit word. Not a counterfeit spirit. Not a counterfeit gift. We don't want nothing counterfeit, God. If we just get just a little bit at a time, God, let it be real. We want something, God, that will keep us from whatever comes on this earth comes. But we'll be able to stand, Lord, with the power of the Holy Ghost and say, I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. Help every person in this place today. Some of them may maybe never meet again. I hope I do on the other side. Lord in heaven. But God, as we leave here today, after a while, God, I ask you, Lord, to touch them. Let them remember this little simple message today and refuse to receive a counterfeit. We want what's in your word. We want what you give us by your Holy Ghost. We want it through your name, God. We want something real. And we know that you'll keep us in the name of Jesus. If you feel like standing, stand. I'm going to ask them to sing a song. If anybody needs to come and pray tonight, you might say, Brother Vincent, I want these preachers to pray for me and I won't receive a counterfeit. You might say, Brother, I've got a habit in my life. I've got sin in my life. You come and we'll lay hands on you and ask God to deliver you from it. As they sing, if anybody needs to pray, come.